If there's one cartoon theme song that has had a grip on me since my childhood, that cartoon theme song has to be the one belonging to fairly odd parents. In my dreams, I see obtuse, rubber goose, green moose, and guava juice. In my waking hours, I see giant snake, birthday cake, large fries, and chocolate shake. They do not let me be. I will take this theme song to my grave. Or maybe, just maybe, when I get the fairy godparents that I so definitely deserve, I can just wish myself to perfect contentedness. But until that happens, here's a Fairly Odd Parents mega marathon featuring facts, theories, and more. Welcome back to Channel Frederator. I'm Keegan, and we've got a Baker's half dozen magical, mystical, fairy-filled episodes of Frederator content lined up in one easy-to-watch video for you. Get ready, because here we go. We'll kick things off nice and easy with the evolution of Fairly Odd Parents. If you just vaguely remember the show from way back when, or if you're a big fan who's totally up to date, this will ensure that you know everything you need to know about the show over the years. Creator Butch Hartman even helped us out with this one. Enjoy! With 16 years, 10 seasons, and a handful of movies under its belt, The Fairly Odd Parents has built up a veritable cartoon universe all its own. While some things about the show have stayed the same, like Vicky the Babysitter still being a nightmare, and Timmy still rocking that pink hat, the show has changed in many ways, like updating its animation style and its cast of characters. This is Adrian with Channel Frederator, and it's time to get your wands ready, friends, because we're heading to Dimsdale for Then vs. Now, The Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> Plot. For 16 years, The Fairly Odd Parents has chronicled the adventures of 10-year-old Timmy Turner, resident of the city of Dimsdale, California. When the cartoon first premiered, it seemed as though Timmy and his fairy godparents were just getting acquainted. As an eager young kid wielding the power of a fresh pair of parents, Timmy's wishes were often grandiose and had disastrous consequences. Oftentimes, he would need to be reminded of the rules, aka the fairy rulebook that outlines what can and can't be wished for. These days, Timmy's a little bit wiser when it comes to his wish-making. He's learned many of the basic rules, and a few rules that have been created after some of his mishaps. As a result, newer episodes of The Fairly Odd Parents often see Timmy using his magic to help his friends and family in their endeavors, such as when he helps his mom become a splendid chef and win a cooking contest. Newer episodes also see trouble brought to Timmy, no magic involved. He's built up a good amount of nemeses at this point, so it's only a matter of time before one of them is ready to launch an assault on Timmy and his fairies. These days, Timmy also has to worry about helping his new friend Chloe navigate how to best use Cosmo and Wanda's powers, but we'll get to that a little later. Of course, just because the types of which wishes Timmy makes are different doesn't mean the consequences are less kooky. Where would the fun be without a little magical mayhem? Animation When The Fairly Odd Parents first premiered, the show was created using entirely hand-drawn animation. Each of Timmy's hijinks was sketched out, inked, and hand-painted using traditional methods, right down to the last sparkle on the fairy's wands. After Fairly Odd Baby aired in 2008, the show seemed to shift slightly in animation style, with cleaned up lines, brighter colors, and more modern animation techniques. Other Nickelodeon shows, such as SpongeBob SquarePants, made a similar update at the time. Even the network itself underwent a makeover with new logos and branding. Now in season 10, the Fairly Odd Parents had made yet another animation leap and gone digital. The colors are even brighter and the humor is more physical. The change in animation also alters the comedic stylings of the show slightly. In its early days, The Fairly Odd Parents was a very dialogue-heavy show, and the animation was more limited to characters standing in place and saying their lines. Because of the new, modern, and easy-to-work-with animation style, The Fairly Odd Parents writers were able to script more physical and visual gags allowing the show to have a balance of dialogue and movement-based humor. Theme song. Chloe's introduction resulted in the Fairly Odd Parents giving its iconic theme song an updated makeover. The show's original theme song gave a brief summary of Timmy's circumstances and how his relationship with his godparents came to be. The current theme song, introduced in season 10, follows the same rhythm and melody as the original, but the lyrics have been updated to reflect the fact that Timmy now has to share Cosmo and Wanda with Chloe, and he is none too pleased. Vicky's probably grateful she no longer has to spend the theme song being transformed into a giant snake or guava juice. Both theme songs were written by show creator Butch Hartman and composed by Ron Jones, who is best known for his work with another cartoon hit, Family Guy. Actors Just as Timmy's managed to stay 10 years old for more than a decade and a half, most of the voice actors have continued to perform their roles for the entirety of the show. Many of the voice actors are adults, meaning that adolescent voice changes were not a risk for them. However, there were two of the show's original voice actors who were kids and eventually required casting changes to remain believable. After the first three seasons of the show, both of Timmy's best friends, Chester and AJ, were swapped for new actors. Originally, Chester was voiced by actor Frankie Muniz, but Jason Marsden took over the part in season 4. As as for AJ, his voice was first tackled by Ibrahim Hanif Muhammad before Gary Leroy Gray took the role. Humor 
The Fairly Odd Parents has always been known for its distinct, edgy brand of humor. Since its inception, gags have always had something for kid and adult viewers, too, with silly gags and clever spoofs alike. Still, its pop culture tinged jokes certainly reflect the span of the show's 16 year run. In its early days, the show relied more on spoofing celebrities and public figures. In the first episode, for example, Cosmo tries to distract Vicky by imitating Jerry Seinfeld. These days, The Fairly Odd Parents looks to popular culture at large when crafting a joke. In an episode from season 9, which aired in 2013, Timmy helps his mom make a viral video, which they upload to a familiar sounding website called To You. Fortunately, The Fairly Odd Parents has managed to keep its humor current without losing its edge. Its clever dialogue based humor has continued to remain a cornerstone of the show's style and large scale appeal. Writers. While The Fairly Odd Parents has retained its cutting edge humor, the funny folks writing the jokes have come and gone. Episodes in the early days often featured show creators Butch Hartman and Steve Marmel listed as primary writers. Hartman and Marmel have gone on to write and produce a variety of smash hits like Nickelodeon's Danny Phantom and Disney's Sunny with a Chance. New episodes now feature a wider array of new writers. Only a handful of writers have their name credited on more than 10 episodes, such as Scott Fellows, Ellen Byron, and Jack C. Thomas to name a few. This is pretty impressive considering how well the show's maintained its distinct tone over so many years. Guess all these writers are just that talented. Movies Naturally, a show as popular as The Fairly Odd Parents was going to warrant several spin-off movies. The show rose from its humble beginnings to foster several hour-long specials and even a live-action version. A series of live-action movies starring Drake Bell as Timmy Turner was produced between 2011 and 2014. In the first movie, Cosmo and Wanda have live-action counterparts, with Cosmo being portrayed by Jason Alexander, aka George from Seinfeld, and Cheryl Hines as Wanda, aka Cheryl on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Comedy fans were likely very excited about these casting choices. The movies take place on a slightly different universe of the show in which Timmy is 23 years old. As a result, the plot's not considered canonical with the cartoon show. Still, all of your favorite characters make appearances. The Fairly Odd Parents has also produced several hour-long special episodes in which the plot is canon to that of the regular cartoon. In Fairly Odd Baby, a huge addition to the cast of characters is made when, due to one of Timmy's wishes, Cosmo becomes pregnant with a fairy baby. This isn't only a big deal because the child will be the first fairy baby born in many years, but because, whoa, these fairies are going to have a baby. People were so excited to see the result of this special that it drew in 8.8 .8 million viewers and became one of the most watched kids specials in 2008. At the end of the movie, Fairly Odd fans meet Poof, Cosmo and Wanda's newborn. Poof becomes a recurring character at the beginning of the sixth season. Poof's character even grows up a bit over time, learning to talk and eventually attending school. It's rare that a cartoon recognizes the passage of time this way, but hey, Poof truly was a miracle. Crossovers and guest stars In addition to its movie universe and canonical specials, The Fairly Odd Parents tackled another animation anomaly when it participated in a series of crossovers with the Nickelodeon show. The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, the cartoon based off of the 2001 feature film. In total, the two shows collaborated for three hour-long specials. Most fans probably remember the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour in particular, as it featured the protagonists of both shows traveling into each other's worlds, and as a consequence being rendered in the other show's animation style. Viewers were happy, or kind of terrified, to see that pink hat in all its 3D Jimmy Neutron style glory. It's also a special occasion when a cartoon welcomes guest stars for one time or even recurring roles. In its early days, when the Fairly Odd Parents' humor more regularly spoofed celebrities, guest stars were more frequent. Chris Kirkpatrick of NSYNC voiced the singer Chip Skylark, comedian Jay Leno voiced the superhero Crimson Chin, and Batman actor Adam West was, well, himself and Catman. In recent episodes, guest stars have been more limited in order to make room for the introduction of regular new additions to the core cast, like Poof and Chloe. Characters One of the most noticeable changes between the early days of The Fairly Odd Parents and today is the addition and modifications within the cast of characters. The show has evolved to include new friends and foes alike, and even show personal growth among some of the recurring characters. One of the biggest changes in the cast is the role of mom and dad. Back in the day, Timmy's parents, known as mom and dad, were always out and about, frequently leaving Timmy at home with babysitter Vicky. These days, mom and dad seem to have toned down their bustling social lives and opt in for spending more time at home with their 10-year-old son. As a result, many new episodes take a closer look at Timmy's relationship with his parents. Considering just how hilarious mom and dad are, fans are most likely glad they don't have quite as many dinner dates these days and developed more of a role in the show. Of course, when mom and dad simply must go out of town, Timmy's left with a horrifying Vicky. In early episodes, Vicky serves as Timmy's primary nemesis, and he's usually using Cosmo and Wanda's magic to escape her wrath or seek some sort of revenge. In more recent episodes, Vicky's still far from being a sympathetic character, but viewers now understand what makes her tick. We've seen her troubled past and her secret affection for Timmy and the Turner family, 
making her more fully fleshed out, but still just as vengeful. When Vicky isn't around to torture the little twerp, Timmy now regularly duels several other formidable foes. Season 4 saw the introduction of Dark Laser, a Darth Vader-esque character that Timmy actually brought to life through a wish gone bad. Dark Lasers appeared as recently as Season 10, so it looks like he and his vengeful ways aren't going anywhere anytime soon. There's also the matter of the anti-fairies. These pesky pixies are opposite versions of each fairy in the known universe. Just as Timmy's fairies wish to help him, the anti-fairies are out to cause chaos for anyone in their path. The anti-fairies first appeared in Season 2 and continue to appear in Season 10. One particularly notable anti-fairy is Foop, Poof's opposite, who began wreaking havoc in Season 7. One villain who seems to have changed their tone completely is Mr. Denzel Crocker, Timmy's teacher at Dimsdale Elementary School. Mr. Crocker was introduced in the first season as a spastic, suspicious antagonist who is constantly targeting Timmy with his obsession for learning the truth about fairies. In recent seasons, Mr. Crocker has developed into a more reluctant ally to Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda. Several episodes have focused on him helping the gang in several situations. I mean, don't get me wrong though, Mr. Crocker is still as weird as ever and his spastic tendencies seem to be one thing about the show that isn't changing anytime soon. In season 10, the show introduced an entirely new main character, Chloe Carmichael. 10-year-old Chloe becomes Timmy's new neighbor and becomes his friend too. Fans and future. Initially, many thought that the Fairly Odd Parents' ninth season would be its last. Fans were surprised and excited when Nickelodeon ordered the tenth season from the show creators. Still, viewers had mixed responses to the new season. In particular, fans questioned Chloe's presence. Some adored the addition of a fresh face to the show, and others questioned why she needed to be added at all. After ten seasons, the jury is still out on whether the show will be renewed for an eleventh season. Fans of Timmy and his crew can only wait with bated breath for news of the Fairly Odd future. Regardless of whether or not more episodes are made, the Fairly Odd Parents will continue to hold the crown of being Nickelodeon's second longest running show of all time, right after Spongebob Squarepants, which premiered two years earlier. Hey everybody, ah, oh, ah, ah, that was my knee. Hey, I'm Butch Hartman, the creator of The Fairly Odd Parents. That was an awesome video, then versus now, pretty cool. Hope you all enjoyed it. But I'm here to give you some stuff about Fairly Odd Parents, some inside info, some, you know, secret things that they don't know at Frederator, but only I know. Here's some inside scoop coming right now. Okay, the plot of Fairly Odd Parents. When it comes to the plot, we originally thought we weren't going to get that many episodes of Fairly Odd Parents to begin with. I started doing the show in 1997. I pitched it as a pilot and I did 10 short cartoons pretty much by myself. I had two or three people helping me, but it was pretty much just me. And the shows just revolved around Timmy Turner, Cosmo and Wanda, and Vicky in the house. And Timmy's mom and dad were hardly ever seen. You only saw their hands their feet, and part of their ear on occasion. I thought that'd be a lot of fun. But then, as Nickelodeon told me they wanted to make the show into an actual series, I realized that hiding mom and dad was going to be really, really difficult, so I decided to show them a lot more. Okay, character design. I think you know that Fairly Odd Parents has kind of evolved over the years when it comes to character design. The characters started off looking very kind of long and a little more stretched out than they ended up being in the later years. And um, if you look at that very first drawing of the Fairly Odd Parents that I ever did, you can see just how different the characters looked at the beginning as opposed to now. And you can probably find that drawing on the internet, Frederator, but do you have the real thing right here? No, you don't, but I have it right here in a frame. So check it out. Wanda's hair is blue. Her name used to be Venus. You can, oh, it used to be Venus. I changed it to Wanda, but it was Venus. And I changed her blue hair because her blue hair would have clashed with Timmy's bedroom walls. We wouldn't be able to see it. And uh, Timmy has a blue hat. That's the only drawing of Timmy I ever did with a blue hat. Then the blue ran out of ink, so I made his hat pink. And then Cosmo, you can see he looks a little bit different, but his design kind of stayed the same. And uh, his um, crown kind of stayed on top of his head, and I decided to make them both float over their heads. So, um, And it was just called Fairy Godparents at the time. I didn't really have the title Fairly Oddparents until much, much later. So that's the character design history of Fairly Oddparents. Now, going into going into some of the characters, when I first started doing the show Fairly Oddparents, uh, it pretty much centered around Timmy. Cosmo, Wanda, and Vicky in Timmy's house. But then when Nickelodeon wanted to make it into an actual series, we had to expand the universe. Timmy needed friends. We gave him Chester, AJ, gave him a school. He needed a teacher. So we came up with this crazy guy named Mr. Crocker, who ended up being not just Timmy's teacher, but a teacher who was obsessed with finding out why Timmy Turner had so many awesome things happening to him all the time. So he went hunting for Timmy's fairies all the time. Mr. Crocker became one of our most popular characters. And we started focusing a lot of the villainy stuff around him, which is why Vicky started uh, sort of started taking a back seat as the years went by. We love Vicky, but Mr. Crocker kind of got a little more funnier. He was a much richer character too than Vicky, but we still bring Vicky back on occasion. 
occasion to uh, mess with our uh, team of evil guys, Foop and Dark Laser and Mr. Crocker as they team up in a group called The Losers. And when it comes to Mr. Crocker, nobody knows this but me, and I think I've mentioned it a few other times, Mr. Crocker was never supposed to be in Fairly Odd Parents originally. I had designed and developed him for another show I was pitching to Nickelodeon at the time, and when they didn't buy that show, I decided to take Crocker and put him into Fairly Odd Parents. Also, the town of Dimsdale wasn't even supposed to be in Fairly Odd Parents. Dimsdale was also a name for a town in that other show, and that show didn't go, so I brought the name of Dimsdale into Fairly Odd Parents. So sometimes ideas start in different places, but you can always meld them into one. Uh, you can always meld them into one great thing once you get that thing rolling. When it comes to voice acting on Fairly Odd Parents, even that's gone through a lot of changes over the years. The character of AJ was played by two different actors uh, throughout his entire existence. Also, the character of Chester was played by two different actors. It started off being played by Frankie Muniz from Malcolm in the Middle, and then we switched over later on to an actor named Jason Marsden who finished off Chester uh, uh, during the Fairly Odd Parents. And we have been going through some changes with Cosmo as well. Cosmo started off, Cosmo started off more like a used car salesman, more like a game show host. And then as the years went by, we just started taking his voice and making it higher and higher and higher. And then it became just the crazy zany Cosmo that you know today. Uh -huh. I can't do the voice, that's why I hire actors. Even Timmy Turner's voice has changed over the years. Timmy Turner was originally played by an actress named Mary Kay Bergman, and then we ended up switching over to Tara Strong, who has voiced the character for nearly 17 years. It's been amazing. We love Tara, and she's done a fantastic job. Some other things you might not know about the Fairly Odd Parents are things only I would know because I've been there the entire existence of the show. We've actually changed writers as the show has gone on. I've had three different story editors for Fairly Odd Parents. We started off with a guy named Steve Marmel, then we switched to a guy named Scott Fellows, who created Big Time Rush, and then we switched over to Ray De Laurentiis, who created Coconut Fred. And Ray's been on the show since 2008, and we've just been having a great time. Ray also worked on my other shows, Tough Puppy and Bunsen is a beast. You know, when you make a show like Fairly Odd Parents for many, many years, uh, you really have to begin to add things to the show to keep the show fresh. I've had a lot of people kind of send me angry emails asking me things like, why did you add Chloe to the show? Or why did you add Sparky the Magic Dog? Or why did you add Poof? Things like that. And as much as uh, I would love to not upset these people, uh, we have to keep the show fresh, mainly because sometimes the network, Nickelodeon, wants us to add things, and so we add things, but we try and add things in a way where it makes the show better, not worse. Uh, the addition of Baby Poof is something I always wanted to do, so um, I wanted Cosmo wanted to have their own kid as opposed to Timmy, so in 2008 we came up with the show Fairly Odd Baby, and it was one of the biggest episodes we ever had, one of the highest rated shows ever, and we were really thrilled about that. Later on we wanted to give Timmy a magic pet, and so we thought bringing a magic dog in would be a lot of fun, so we added Sparky. And then, later on, the network asked us to add another character in that would uh, kind of be not really an enemy of Timmy, but a friend of Timmy, but that would kind of make his life a little harder. So we added Chloe into the show, uh, Chloe Carmichael, and we thought it'd be fun if Chloe wasn't just a kid in Timmy's life, but she was also a kid who had fairies, and what better way to mess with Timmy than to give her Timmy's fairies, Cosmo and Wanda, so they got to share the fairies uh, like every other day, almost like a custody battle. So we thought that was a lot of fun. And then the network even wanted us to change the theme song once we added Chloe uh, into the show. The network did a promo where they changed the Fairly Odd Parents theme song just for the promo. And uh, you can see the new theme song when you see the Chloe episodes. But the promo was so good, everybody loved it so much, they wanted to give me the theme song and have me put it in the show for the first season of Chloe's existence. I thought, why not? It'd be a lot of fun. Let's see what people think. Some people loved it, some people didn't. People have no idea. They thought we were changing it forever. We really aren't. You can still see the original Fairly Odd Parents theme song on a bunch of other episodes too. But sometimes you gotta make things fresh and keep things going. So that's why we do stuff like that. One thing a lot of people don't know is that Fairly Odd Parents has actually been canceled a number of times over the years, but it's always been brought back. We were canceled around like 2003, 2007, and then in 2000, I think in 2011, and every single time we've been canceled, I think some other times too, about five times we were told we were done, but every time the show has re-risen from the ashes, just like the Phoenix. So we are, we are a show that keeps coming back just like magic. 
Over the years on Fairly Odd Parents, we've also had a lot of really cool guest stars do voices for us, which has been just a blast. We had Jay Leno do the Crimson Chin, Timmy's superhero friend. We had Adam West do Catman, Timmy's other superhero friend, who's kind of crazy. We had Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley from the rock group Kiss come on and be in one of our biggest specials of all time, Wishology. And we've had a ton of other actors come on that have voiced characters on the Fairly Odd Parents and really made the show even that much more special. Okay, doing Fairly Odd Parents over the years, we always write the show and do all the pre-production in Nickelodeon in Burbank, but the show has been animated in Korea by a, a studio named Yesan Animation. We worked with them for many, many years, for about 15 years, but the last season of the show was actually animated in Flash. The season of Chloe's uh, adventures with Timmy was animated in Flash by a Canadian studio named George Elliott Animation. They did a fantastic job too. If you look at those episodes as compared to the original Fairly Odd Parents episodes, you can definitely see a difference because the Korean studio did it all by hand and the um, Canadian studio did it in Flash. And uh, even though Flash is done by hand, it's a little different where you just take the characters, you draw them once, and you can use them over and over again, kind of like a cutout, where as opposed to the hand-drawn stuff, you have to draw everything originally from the beginning. What's really cool about Fairly Odd Parents, it was such a popular cartoon, and thank you so much for making it that way, all you fans out there. We actually did a bunch of live action movies in uh, the early 2010s. We did uh, a Fairly Odd Movie, Grow Up Timmy Turner, a Fairly Odd Christmas, and we did Fairly Odd Summer, all of them starring Drake Bell as Timmy Turner. And even though he's 23 in that movie, in that series of movies, we had a great time doing it. Those really don't jive with the history of Fairly Odd Parents. All the history of the, of the live action movies doesn't necessarily fit with the cartoon. But we had such a great time doing them and sometimes when you're making a live action movie you can't do everything you can do in a cartoon. So a lot of the magic in those movies, even though it's cool, is a little more limited than I wanted it to be. But still, it was a lot of fun to do. And Fairly Odd Parents was such a popular cartoon that the execs at Nickelodeon came to me one day and said, Hey Butch, we want you to make a live action Fairly Odd Parents. And I said, Of course I will, that'd be a lot of fun. Then I realized, what am I gonna do? I gotta make this movie more special than just making a live action version of the TV show. So we decided to age up Timmy Turner to be like older, where he's never ever grown up mentally. Like he still lives at home, doesn't have a job still goes to school. Also, he can still keep his fairies and not grow up. So he still got Cosmo Wand at age 23, and we thought that was a lot of fun. So we were like, who are we gonna cast as Timmy Turner? And Drake Bell just occurred to us. Drake's fantastic, he's worked at Nickelodeon forever, and he was the perfect Timmy Turner to play the live action version. So we did three movies with Drake. A Fairly Odd Movie, Grow Up Timmy Turner, Fairly Odd Christmas, and A Fairly Odd Summer. All starring Drake as Timmy and Daniela Monet as Tootie, Timmy's uh, you know girlfriend from the show. Girlfriend, I guess. Not really his girlfriend, but the girl who loves Timmy. But she's all grown up, she's beautiful. And they're in all three movies. We had a great time doing them. And what I learned about live action, even though it's a lot of fun to do, live action is a lot more limiting than animation. I couldn't do as much magic in the live action movies as I can in the cartoon. Because everything has to be actually done in real life. So you have to figure out, oh, an elephant appears. We have to go get a real elephant. Things like that are a little more tricky. But it was a lot of fun doing the fairies and CGI. And we just had a great time. Now those, um, those movies are a lot of fun, but they don't necessarily fit with the history of the show. A lot of things in the movies we kind of uh, didn't really maintain as much uh, like conical history from the show as we did into the movies. They don't really necessarily jive together. There's some things that don't really line up. However, live action movies don't necessarily always line up with the original source material. Look at a Spider-Man movie. They can't do everything in the Spider-Man movie they've done in the cartoons, right? Or in the comic books, there's just too much there. So we take the important parts we make the fun stuff and we have a great time and hopefully the audience loves it. And also, if you guys don't know, for the 25th anniversary of Nickelodeon Animation, Nickelodeon asked me to make a crossover episode of all of my shows. Actually, they didn't really ask me to do that. They just said, hey, Butch, we'd like you to do something special. What do you want to do? And I said, I want to cross over all four of my shows. So they let me do a crossover animated uh, special so Nickelodeon let me do an animated crossover special featuring Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, Tough Puppy, and Bunsen as a Beast. It came out last year, it's really awesome. You can check it out on YouTube, but it combines all four of my shows. And let me know if you guys wanna see an entire series with all four of my shows combined. I think that'd be kinda cool. 
I really hope you've enjoyed 16 years of Fairly Odd Parents, and I'm looking forward to 16 more. I want to thank Fred Rader for having me on this video. Thank you guys so much. You know what? If you want to see what Fairly Odd Parents really would look like maybe 10 years from now, check it out because I'm going to be putting out a brand new video, Fairly Odd Parents, 10 years later, part two. Go to my channel, check it out on YouTube. I think you're going to really dig it. I hope you guys had a great time, and I'm going to go get my knee checked out. Ow! The knee. Groundwork laid. Pink hat, well, mine's blue. Wishes granted. You did wish for two servings of 107 facts, right? Because, yeah, here they are. When the Fairly Odd Parents first debuted years ago, the world was left to wonder, how can I get some awesome fairy godparents? The magical adventures, the hilarious wishes, fairy world, fans just couldn't get enough. My name is Tim, and today on Channel Frederator, we're counting down 107 facts you should know about the Fairly Odd Parents. Let's get started. Number one, The Fairly Odd Parents is turning 15 years old. The first full-length episode, The Big Problem, premiered on Friday, March 30th, 2001. Number two, it was created by Butch Hartman, who also created Danny Phantom and Tough Puppy, and named by Bill Burnett, co-creator of Chalk Zone. Number three, Hartman thought of the idea for the show in October of 1997, while working as a storyboard artist on the first season of Johnny Bravo at Cartoon Network. Number four, which is why Hartman originally pitched the show to Cartoon Network, but they turned it down. When asked how long it took him to write the pitch, Butch answered, 15 minutes. Number 5. Hartman produced 10 7-minute Fairly Odd Parent shorts as part of Frederator's Oh Yeah Cartoons anthology preceding the series. Number 6. Channel Frederator, yes, this Channel Frederator, was founded by network mastermind Fred Seibert. He's also the executive producer of the Fairly Odd Parents alongside Hartman. Number 7. The show was created alongside a fresh batch of cartoons in Seibert's Oh Yeah Cartoons and Random Cartoons a project specifically aimed at making several seven-minute short gag animations. Some other shows from this project include Chalk Zone, My Life as a Teenage Robot, Fanboy and Chum Chum, and Adventure Time. Number eight, Hartman wanted the main character to easily move from one location to the next. He thought magic would be the best source for this ability, and that it'd be even funnier if the main character had no control over it and had to rely on someone else. This is how Timmy ended up having fairy godparents. Number nine, initially Hartman decided to make a show about a little boy with a fairy godmother mother like Cinderella's, but then realized he'd never seen a show with a fairy godfather, so he added Cosmo to the mix. Number 10, Timmy Turner, the show's 10-year-old hero, is named after Hartman's younger brother, Timmy Hartman. Hartman hopes to make more shows with protagonists that he can name after his other brothers. Number 11, distinguishing its style from other animated shows, The Fairly Odd Parents is heavily dialogue-driven and written like a live-action sitcom in a writer's room. Number 12, for years, the writers were led by stand-up comic, Steve Marmel, who also worked on I Am Weasel, Danny Phantom, Family Guy, and Yin Yang Yo. Number 13, The Simpsons inspired Hartman to create a show that incorporated a big cast of characters. Number 14, besides being the creator of several hit Nickelodeon series, Hartman appeared in the 80s sitcom Growing Pains and the long-running soap opera Days of Our Lives. Number 15, in the Fairly Odd Parent shorts featured in Oh Yeah Cartoons, Timmy Turner was originally voiced by Mary Kay Bergman. Following Bergman's passing, Tara Strong was cast to voice Timmy. Number 16, when Strong auditioned for the role of Timmy, she was given a character drawing and a script to draw inspiration for his voice. She was also asked to watch the short pilot and try and match Mary Bergman's style, but to also make it her own. Number 17, Strong is also known as the voice of Bubbles from Powerpuff Girls, Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony, Harley Quinn in Batman, Arkham Knight, Raven from Teen Titans Go, Terrence from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, and Omi from Shaolin Showdown. Number 18, according to Strong, if Timmy Turner and Harley Quinn were in a throwdown, Harley would win. Number 19, Suzanne Black as Lee's voice for Wanda was heavily influenced by her first impression of her character's design, especially her swirly pink hair. Number 20, Wanda's design was inspired by Wilma Flintstone from the classic 1960s animated series, The Flintstones. Number 21, originally Hartman wanted Timmy to have a blue hat, but after his blue marker ran out of ink, he tried using a pink marker and stuck with it. Number 22, in the shorts on Oh Yeah Cartoons, Timmy's parents' faces are never shown.
shown. They are usually shown from the neck down or just the top of their heads. Number 23. Tootie made her first appearance in the short The Fairy Flu when the Fairly Odd Parents was still on Oh Yeah cartoons. After her debut, Tootie's character design was transformed. She originally had pink rounded glasses and a blue t shirt with pink pants. In the series, she is shown with purple cat eye glasses and braces. Number 24. Hartman describes Timmy as a sarcastic, quick tempered, wise guy who loves comic books and video games. He confesses Timmy is his alter ego, except Hartman doesn't have fairy godparents. Number 25. When creating Fairy World, Hartman wanted to achieve the ultimate vacation world and was inspired by Disneyland, where anything could happen. And if you're looking for Disneyland stuff, we have 107 facts on Disneyland, where anything can happen. Number 26. In Fairy World, there are streets named after magicians, like Penn and Teller. You can see for yourself in the episode that old black magic. Number 27. When Cosmo competes in Fairy Idol, his performance is actually sung by American Idol's season 3 runner-up, Diana DeGarmo. Number 28. Hartman thought it would be funny if the leader of the fairies was someone you would least expect, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of I am. Number 29. Hartman also wanted Fairy Academy to seem like the least stereotypical fairy place ever, one where everyone had to do push ups and lift weights. Number 30. The first season of The Fairly Odd Parents had only seven episodes. To put that in perspective, the latest season, season 9, had 26. Number 31. It took Hartman and his crew a year to make those first seasons. Six episodes, which Nickelodeon kept airing throughout 2001. Once they realized they had a hit, they ordered more. Number 32. Timmy's parents are definitely Trekkies, as evidenced by their son's middle name, Tiberius, in reference to Star Trek's first Starfleet captain, James Tiberius Kirk. Number 33. While recording the episode The Odd Couple, Gray Delisle, the voice of Vicky, Tootie, Veronica, Chad, and many others, added the line, Ricky, don't lose that number. You don't want to call nobody else. Send it off in a letter to yourself. Those are the lyrics to Steely Dan's hit song, Ricky, don't lose that number. Number 34. When coming up with the premise for Wishology, one of the writers suggested including a band like Kiss, but calling them Smooch. That's because the staff never expected to get Kiss to be in the episode, but they agreed. They even gave them permission to use the song Rock and Roll All Night and use their signature Kiss makeup and costumes. Number 35. That's right, fairies rock and roll all night and party every day. In the show, Fairy World is guarded by Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Eric Singer, and Tommy Thayer, and they protect fairies from the darkness using their rock and roll powers. Number 36. Fairy World isn't the only secret magical world that exists. There's also Harry World, which is Harry, and Scary World, which isn't all that scary, and Dairy World, which is run by talking magical cows. Number 37. The voice behind the comical April Fool in the episode Christmas Every Day is a parody of comedian Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> I haven't had the punchline yet! Number 38. The voice of the head pixie in Sanderson is Ben Stein, who was also the economics teacher in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He's also an economist. Hey everyone, taking a quick break to let you know what's coming up next week. On Tuesday on Cartoon Hangover, we have 107 facts about the Spider-Man animated series. Then on Thursday on Channel Frederator, we have 107 more facts about Steven Universe, because it turns out that you guys really, really like Steven Universe. And with that, Back to the facts. Number 39. Hartman described working on the special Channel Chasers as a nerd's paradise because everyone who works on the show is a huge cartoon geek and a huge fan of all the shows referenced in the episode. The episode references 21 shows including, and get ready for this, The Jetsons, Rugrats, Fat Albert, Johnny Quest, Strawberry Shortcake, Peanuts, Space Ghost, Politically Incorrect, Wheel of Fortune, The Flintstones, Speed Racer, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, Batman, The Animated Series, Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Simpsons, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Dragon Ball Z, Blue's Clues, and Sesame Street. Number 40. Hartman loves all of his characters, but he's particularly attached to Cosmo because he does the wrong thing most of the time, but always means well. Number 41. Darren Norris voices Cosmo, Mr. Turner, Jorgen Von Strangle, Anti-Cosmo, and George Washington. He also voices the Chief, Francisco, and the Chameleon on Tough Puppy. Number 42. Since the premiere of the shorts on Oh Yeah Cartoons, Norris's performance as Cosmo has evolved. At first, he played Cosmo similar to a cool Phil Hartman type, but as the writers made Cosmo dumber and dumber, Norris shifted his voice to sound more high-pitched and dopey. This pirate game was your idea, Timmy. Number 43. In 2006, Nickelodeon ceased production of the show, and the episode, Timmy the Barbarian slash No Substitute for Crazy, was the series finale. However, in 2007, Nickelodeon granted the Fairly Odd Parents 
experience another 20 episodes. And after its one year hiatus, the show returned with the 48 minute episode, Fairly Odd Baby. Number 44, Fairly Odd Baby is the highest viewed episode for the series with a total of 9.1 million views. The only program to draw in more children viewers the year it premiered was the Super Bowl. Number 45, by 2007, Timmy had 41 different costume changes. He's been a superstar of Lob, a dragon, a barbarian, a merman, a two-headed crab, and the list goes on and on. Number 46, Cosmo and Wanda also hide themselves in plain sight using a variety of strange and adorably matching disguises. They've been, get ready, goldfish, pens, dogs, cows, squirrels, a heart, a lunchbox, stick figures, and more. As of 2007, they've disguised themselves over 63 times. Number 47, when the show's artists have to draw the fairies raising their arms, they lower the fairies' corresponding wing. This is done to avoid the arm blocking the wings and to maintain strong silhouettes for the characters. Number 48, Timmy lives in Dimsdale, which is supposed to be located in Northern California. The town Dimsdale, spelled with one M, is an actual suburb in the UK where there's also a Simpson Street. Remember that Hartman was influenced by The Simpsons when creating The Fairly Odd Parents? I love it when a town comes together. Number 49. Besides Star Trek and The Simpsons, Hartman is also a big fan of Star Wars and has dropped little references to it throughout the series. For example, in the episodes Escape from Unwish Island and Hard Guppy, the recurring villain character Dark Laser is a reference to infamous bad dad Darth Vader. And in the episode Abracatastrophe, Cosmo and Timmy reenact a scene from Star Wars Episode 5. Number 50. Speaking of dads, Darren Norris who voices Cosmo and Timmy's dad also got to act as Timmy's dad in the live action film A Fairly Odd Movie. If you didn't know there was a live action movie, there is. Number 51. Inspired by how effectively people could learn through listening to songs from Schoolhouse Rock, Hartman wanted to create a theme song that told audiences what the show was about. Hartman was also influenced by the theme songs from The Flintstones and Gilligan's Island. Number 52. Guy Moon, the musical composer for the show, has also worked on Cow and Chicken, Johnny Bravo, Chalk Zone, and The Electric. Piper. Moon even holds the record for most scores for Oh Yeah cartoons. Number 53. Originally for the opening title sequence, Timmy was going to get hit in the head with a soccer ball. In the finalized title sequence, he gets knocked over by a volleyball. Wonder what made them change that little detail. Number 54. For the opening of each episode, Vicky's head gets turned into an object or character that relates to the theme of the episode. The only time she wasn't changed was for Escape from Unwishland slash The Gland Plan, where instead of changing her head, Cosmo's head turns into Vicky's. Number 55, also from the episode Escape from Unwishland, Timmy passes by lockers for things that he didn't want to wish for. On them are the names of celebrities such as P. Diddy, Vanilla Ice, and Duran Duran. Number 56, the episode Tim Visible was the first time the show staff tried to create an invisible character. We imagine creating invisible characters might have its challenges. Number 57, the comic book superhero Crimson Chin is voiced by none other than Jay Leno, also known for his punchlines and strong jawline. Number 58, recording sessions for voice actors typically take three hours, but Leno would wrap up after just 20 minutes. The recording studio also happened to be right down the street from where Leno would tape The Tonight Show. Number 59, in the episode Crash Nebula, Sprig can be seen reading a Brock Rocket book, and the back cover features Danny Phantom, which Hartman also created. Number 60, after reading Crash Nebula, Nebula, Hartman was in development to create a new full-length animated spin-off series that revolved around the character Crash Nebula, but he ultimately didn't make it because he was already busy with the Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom. Number 61, another referencing Easter egg. In the episode Poltergeeks, Danny Phantom can be seen in one of the screens of Mr. and Mrs. Turner's lair. Number 62, Elmer, the boy with the boil, is named after Hartman, whose real name is Elmer Earl Hartman. In one of the early drafts of the pilot short, Elmer was originally named Carl. Number 63, Elmer's Boyle is named Bob after one of the show's former producers, Bob Boyle. Number 64, the side of Elmer's face that has the Boyle switches throughout the series. Number 65, Timmy's friend Chester has been played by two voice actors. From 2001 to 2003, he was played by Frankie Muniz from Malcolm in the Middle. After 2003, Jason Marsden took over the role of Chester. Number 56, Timmy's friend AJ has also been voiced by two different actors. Ibrahim Hanif Muhammad from 2001 to 2003 and Gary Leroy Gray from 2002 to 2013. Number 67. The Fairly Odd Parents had three crossover episodes with the show The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, which includes both 2D and 3D animation. Number 68. On average, artists have to make 125 background drawings per episode. That's because there is no set floor plan or layout to the house. This allows storyboard artists to knock down or add walls depending on the episode.
Number 69, the ninth season introduced fans to Timmy's new magical dog, Sparky. Hartman explains that Sparky originally started as a little ball of floof, but after a lot of sketching, ended up on his current design. His wings prove he's a fairy, Hartman added. Number 70, Matt Taylor, who previously worked on Tough Puppy, says voicing Sparky has been his favorite project with Hartman so far. Number 71, Timmy's dog Sparky was inspired by Rick Moranis' character, Louis Tully, from Ghostbusters. When creating the voice of Sparky, Taylor even looked to Moranis' performance for inspiration. I know a lot of words, because I just ate a dictionary. Number 72, during his first recording session as Sparky, Tara Strong jokingly busted Taylor's chops saying, you better be funny, and didn't allow him to look at her until he finally made her laugh. All throughout the recording session, Taylor covered his face to avoid looking into Tara's eyes. Number 73, the show's artist created over 28 character designs for Sparky before making a final decision. In a previous design, Sparky even looked a bit like a Pac-Man ghost. Number 74, Sparky's color scheme was ultimately chosen to be yellow and orange because it works best with the rest of the show's characters. Other colors Hartman considered making Sparky included blue, green, and pink. Number 75, Wanda's sister Blonda is voiced by funny lady Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who's also starred in Veep, Seinfeld, The New Adventures of Old Christine, and A Bug's Life. Number 76, Blonda was imagined by Hartman's daughter Carly when she was eight years old. Number 77, in the episode It's a Wishful Life, Hartman gives a shout out to his other daughter, Sophia, as the idealized daughter of Timmy's parents. Number 78, Mr. Crocker, who constantly tries to uncover Timmy's fairies, was inspired by the character Walter Kornbluth from the film Splash. In Splash, Kornbluth tries to prove that mermaids exist. Number 79, Hartman and his writers love to write for Timmy's dad, Mr. Crocker, and Cosmo. They say working with them always guarantees a good laugh. Number 80, Catman is voiced by the legendary actor Adam West. You might know him as Batman from the 1960s series and feature film, or as Mayor West in Family Guy. Number 80, in the episode, Miss Dimsdale, Adam West became the first actor to portray himself on the Fairly On Parents. Number 82, Trixie is voiced by Dion Kwan, who is also the voice of Kimmy Fisher in The Rugrats. Since Kwan is blind, she reads her scripts from Braille. Number 83, Timmy has a secret skill, biting his toenails, yet he's horrified by feet. Number 84, Timmy has another bad habit. At night, he grinds his teeth together. Considering his buck teeth are the most valuable in the universe, valued at $350 million, he should probably do something about that. Number 85, Timmy's deepest secret is that he doesn't feel fulfilled and happy enough to relieve Wanda and Cosmo from their duties as his fairy godparents. Number 86, Carlos Jaime Alizraki is voice actor for Denzel Crocker, Juandissimo Magnifico, Sheldon Dinkelberg, The Mayor, and Grandpa Vlad. Number 87, Cosmo is multi-talented. He's written a book called Conversations with Butch, and he's also in a band. He plays the electric triangle in The Fairies with Pan, Beethoven, Santa, and Eric Clapton. Number 88, Timmy Turner's parents' names have never been revealed. Usually they're only referred to as Mom and Dad, Mr. and Mrs. Turner, or Timmy's Mom and Dad. Number 89, in the episode babyface, Timmy is able to spell out I wish I was 10 on a license plate that only holds seven characters. Number 90, Cosmo's secret password is Philip, which is also the name of his nickel that he is oddly attached to. Philip! Number 91, Hartman voices Dr. Rip Studwell, the fairy doctor who's also a soap opera actor and admits the character most closely resembles himself. He also noted that the character designers set out to make Dr. Rip Studwell a much younger version of himself. Number 92, in addition to Dr. Rip Studwell, Hartman has made over 15 cameos in The Fairly Odd Parents. He's appeared as Tinkerbell in The Shiny Bacteria in Tiny Timmy, the president in The Old Black Magic, the bouncer in Foul Bald, the soap star in The Boy Who Would Be Queen, the police guard in The Big Problem, the gardener in Dog's Day Afternoon, the alien captain in Spaced Out, the ticket guy in Fairy Fairy Quite Contrary, the bus driver in A Wish Too Far, the football coach in The Big Problem, the mayor's guard in Dream Goat, the monster in Mighty Mom and Dino Dad, and the man in the brown shirt in The Big Problem. That's just plain creepy. Number 93, The Fairly Odd Parents is the second longest running animated series on Nickelodeon following SpongeBob. Number 94, and in true Easter egg fashion, in the episode App Trap, a human caricature of SpongeBob can be spotted. Number 95, The Fairly Odd Parents is aired in 113 
14 countries and territories and is dubbed in 27 languages. Number 96, the show celebrated its 10th anniversary on July 9th, 2011 with their first live action CGI movie, a fairly odd movie, Grow Up, Timmy Turner. Hartman wanted to take the series in a new direction for the movie and he had always wanted to make a live action CGI movie. Number 97, there have been three live action Fairly Odd Parents movies, including A Fairly Odd Movie, Grow Up, Timmy Turner, A Fairly Odd Christmas, and A Fairly Odd Summer. For its international release, A Fairly Odd Summer is called A Fairly Odd Paradise. Number 98, Drake Bell, who played Timmy in the live action movies, says his favorite episode is Miss Dimsdale, when Timmy's dad decides to compete in the Miss Dimsdale beauty pageant. Number 99, Miss Dimsdale marks the first episode Timmy's dad dressed in drag, but certainly not the last. Number 100, the voice behind the talented and delicious pop sensation Chip Skylark is actual pop star and former member of NSYNC, Chris Kirkpatrick. Number 101, Timmy and Chip Skylark share the same birthday. Both characters were born on March 21st, making them both an Aries. Aries are supposed to be optimistic and enthusiastic, yet impulsive and impatient. Number 102, when Chip Skylark gets stressed out, his teeth lose their shininess and his hair loses its sheen. The solution? The sound of a flushing toilet. Number 103, Chloe Carmichael, Timmy's new neighbor in season 10, is voiced by Carrie Walgren. Walgren also voiced little Susie from Phineas and Ferb, and one of her first voice acting jobs was to record herself screaming for a Six Flags commercial. Number 104. More importantly, Chloe will also be his god sister. That's right, Timmy will have to share Cosmo and Wanda with Chloe, which means on average they each get one, which seems like it works out. Number 105. Chloe joins the long list of Cosmo and Wanda's godchildren, including Tina Turner, Bill Gates, and Benjamin Franklin. Number 106. Mark your calendars. Season 10 of The Fairly Odd Parents premieres Friday, January 15th. 15th at 7.30 p.m. Number 107, Hartman has said that if he had his own fairy godparents, he'd wish for more time to make episodes of The Fairly Odd Parents. After watching The Fairly Odd Parents for 16 years, you'd think somebody would finally get Timmy Turner. But alas, it's 2017, and he's still an average kid that no one understands. We even put together 107 facts about Fairly Odd Parents, and that still didn't help. Clearly, it's time for 107 more. Hey guys, I'm Joe with Channel Frederator, and since your wish is our command, we are back with a a brand new list of fairly odd facts about Nickelodeon's hit show. We've got the behind the scenes scoop on character inspirations, celebrity cameos, and Timmy Turner's rap debut? Yeah, so get ready to flip your lid because this is 107 more facts about the fairly odd parents. Let's do it. Let's kick off with some facts about the OG magical power trio themselves, Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda. For example, you might already know that Timmy was named after Butch Hartman's brother, Tim, but what you may not know is that he was almost named Mike after Butch Hartman's other brother. If Butch and Mike hadn't gotten into a family spat during the show's conception, we all may be talking about Mikey Turner. But wait, there's more. After Butch decided on the name Timmy, he had to come up with a last name, and he chose Taylor. He soon discovered, however, that Tim Taylor was already the name of the guy from Home Improvement. So he switched it to Turner. Timmy Taylor, Timmy Turner, close enough. Remember the classic fairly odd fact about how Timmy was supposed to have a blue hat? Well, he wasn't the only one. Wanda was also supposed to have blue hair. Her color change wasn't because Butch Hartman ran out of ink though. It was because Timmy's room was already blue and they wanted her hair to stand out against it. Yeah, I'd say the hot pink is pretty hard to miss. Cosmo and Venus? Yes, Wanda's name was almost Venus thanks to an early conceived running gag about fairies having space themed names. However, the pun game with Wanda was way too strong strong to resist, and Butch Hartman ended up changing it. They didn't let the name Venus go to waste, however. In fact, it's actually Wanda's middle name now. Wanda Venus Fairywinkle. That's about as fantastical as it gets. There's a reason that Wanda calls Timmy Sport all the time, and it's not just because it's a sign of endearment. Turns out, Wanda actually has a terrible memory and forgets Timmy's name most of the time, and here we are giving Cosmo a hard time. Speaking of which, it's no secret that Cosmo isn't exactly the brightest wand in the shop, but there's a good reason for it. Apparently, he's a spellementary school dropout as in the school where fairies learn to control their magic. Explains a lot, don't it? Cosmo was named after Hanna-Barbera animator Cosmo Anzalotti, a former co-worker of Butch Hartman's. See, if you get into animation, then maybe one day you'll have an iconic cartoon character named after you too, if you have a cool name like Cosmo, that is. Before Cosmo and Wanda had the colorful bite-sized designs that we'd know and love today, they look very different. Cosmo was a Homer Simpson-like couch potato, and Wanda had a frumpier, more human look. Some ideas are much better left on the drawing board. A lot of work goes 
goes on behind the scenes of a TV show, especially an animated series. These things don't get wished up overnight. Here are some BTS facts about FOP. The show had a few working names before it landed on its fairly odd title. For instance, it was once called simply The Fairy Godparents. Then it took a more ponderful route with the title Oh My Godparents. That one wasn't a winner, but it was just a hop, skip, and a wish away from The Fairly Odd Parents. It took a year for The Fairly Odd Train to roll out of the station. Nickelodeon originally ordered just six episodes of the show and stuck to those same six for about a year, playing them on repeat and slowly accumulating the ratings boost. Then they realized that the show was magic and got cranking on the other nine seasons. Better late than never, FOP movie Channel Chasers actually had a full-blown musical number called If I Lived in TV that got cut from the final release. It parodies even more old TV shows like Friends, SNL, and American Idol. You know, all those classics from 20 years ago. Man, I feel old. Flappy Bob is a phony? Yes. According to a scrapped song from School's Out the Musical, Flappy Bob wasn't originally going to be the big bad. It was none other than Imaginary Gary. Not to be confused with Peppy Happy Gary. Ever notice that Timmy's bedroom is always changing size, shape, and design? Aside from having a bad case of the blues, that's because, unlike the Fairy Council, Timmy's bedroom doesn't have a rule book. The artists are free to draw it with whatever layout they need. No floor plans required. In the original script for Wishology, the final ending, there was no memory wipe written in at the end of the script. This means that going forward, everyone would have either known about Timmy's fairies, or maybe that there was no going forward, and Wishology was really going to be the final ending. Either way, the change was made, so all we can do now is speculate. Are the live action Fairly Odd Parents movies considered canon to the TV series? The word from on high, aka the production team, is that it's up for interpretation. Personally, we say, the more Fairly Odd Parents, the merrier. Fairly Odd Parents was saved from the brink of death, or the brink of cancellation. It was originally slated to be end back in 2006, hand in hand with Jimmy Neutron during the third Jimmy Timmy Power Hour. However, Nickelodeon must have heard its fans' wishes and granted them over 10 more years of episodes. Who says magic isn't real? There was almost a Fairly Odd Parents movie. No, not a TV special, a real movie. Butch Hartman and Steve Marmel had already written the script and were ready to get production rolling, when a power shift at Paramount stopped it dead in its tracks. Maybe one day, somehow, we'll see a release of the film, but just know that the script is out there, even now, waiting. Beginning in Season 10, Fairly Odd Parents switched from traditional animation to Adobe Flash animation. It's the same program used to make shows like The Mighty Magiswords and Butch Hartman's other show, Bunsen is a Beast. Okay, okay, enough production talk. Fairly Odd Parents is all about characters, and whether they've been in 10 episodes or 100, they've all got quirks. Take Timmy's parents, for instance. They were never meant to have faces. When Butch Hartman realized how much this limited potential plot lines, the production team held a contest to design them, or at least design their upper torsos. We may not know Mrs. Turner's first name, but we do know her maiden name. It's Vladislavov. Her side of the family is Eustinkistanian. On the Turner side of the family, Timmy's heritage can be traced back to colonial times. His ancestor, Ebenezer Turner, was one of the founders of Dimsdale and the town crier. Just one dumb man in a long, long line of dumb, dumb men. Timmy gets his signature buck teeth from his pappy. No, it's not because of genetics. Pappy let Timmy suck on his pacifier for too long as a baby, leaving Tiny Tim with two titanic teeth. Mr. Turner's shifty-eyed grumbles of Dinkleberg were only meant to be a one-and-done gag. However, the writers thought it was so funny that it appeared again and again and again. The Dinkleberg grumble has even been immortalized as a meme, as I'm sure you've all seen. Well, turns out Butch Hartman has seen it too, and he loves it. That's the ultimate stamp of approval. Butch Hartman has said that Poof was the hardest character on the show to design. Poof may look like just a glittering bowling ball with eyes, but sometimes it's the simplest designs that are the most deceiving. Poof's name wasn't always going to be Poof. At one point, his name was actually going to be Dusty, because then he'd be Fairy Dust. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, Poof's a better name. Of all the characters she's voiced, which include Jessica on Rick and Morty, Chandra Jimenez on Gravity Falls, and Anka on Archer, voice actress Carrie Walgreen said that she relates most with Chloe Carmichael. Apparently, she had a lot in common with Chloe at that age, which hopefully refers to the altruism and not the baby smelling. Chloe's full name is Chloe Mother Teresa Neil Armstrong Carmichael. Wow, even her middle names are sickeningly inspiring. And Timmy's is named after a TV show character. The Crimson Chin's name doesn't perfectly translate to other languages, but they certainly do try. In Sweden, he's called Rodhaken, which means the red chin. And in Denmark, it's Hagamanden, meaning the chin man. It just doesn't have the same ring to it. We all know Vicky is cold-hearted, but the actual state of her heart changes from episode to episode. In front of me mine, her heart is three sizes too small. In Timmy's eggs ray vision, her heart is made of stone. In Tiny Timmy, it's literally a black hole. No matter what though, it's not a place you want to be. Mark Chang was originally supposed to have an evil alien voice. However, Rob Paulson came in and did a radical surfer dude voice, and it was so wrong for the role that they had to go with it. Most excellent. 
Mr. Crocker wasn't made for Fairly Odd Parents. Butch Hartman designed him for a different show that he was pitching at the same time, and when FOP got picked up first, he juggled the crackpot over into this one. Tootie is named after Butch Hartman's daughter. Okay, so his daughter's name isn't Tootie. It's a nickname she had when she was little, but Butch liked it and immortalized it in an awkward animated form. In the German version of the show, Jorgen von Strangel's name is Jean-Claude Van Ram. This is a reference to popular Belgian martial artist Jean-Claude Van Damme. Does this guy really look like a Jean-Claude to you? In their first appearances, Mr. and Mrs. Buxaplenty were all leg, as was the case with Timmy's parents early on. We never actually saw their faces. That is, until Country Clubbed, when they were given a bit of redesign and, well, faces to match. So how did the Buxaplenties accumulate their mass fortune anyway? Two words, railroad industry. It was just the ticket. That really set them on the right track. In Boys in the Band, Chip Skylark, who is of course played by NSYNC's own Chris Kirkpatrick, randomly blurts out, the album comes out July 24th. NSYNC actually did have an album come out on July 24th of that same year, just a month before this episode aired. Talk about cross-promotion. Anyone remember Jeff the Elf? Timmy's temporary fairy from way back in the Oh Yeah cartoon days? Well, he seemed to poof after that episode, but can be spotted at Timmy's fairyversary party in Abracatastrophe. Aw, he remembered. There are so many episodes of Fairly Odd Parents at this point, we'll do the math on that later this video, that there are a lot of little references or changes that can slip right by you in a single moment. Recently, Season 10 episode Certifiable Super Sitter brought some big changes to the show. It was the first episode to air on Nicktoons instead of Nickelodeon, and was the first episode to air that was made with Adobe Flash rather than traditional animation. In that same episode, Poof does impersonations of Scarface, Elvis Presley, and Donald Trump, and it's not the only time that the show has poked fun at our president. In the 2015 episode, The Very Beginning, Timmy gets a Trump-like hairdo that he shoots down for being too Trump. In Season 4 episode Shelf Life, Timmy cuts off Wanda before she can say the word Mouseketeer. Why? As you may know, Mouseketeers were members of the Mickey Mouse Club, and thanks to Disney, it's a copyrighted term, so they couldn't keep it in the script. Wait, can we say that? Uh, moving on. Cosmo's old high school bully, Luther Lex, is a reference to Superman villain Lex Luthor, only, you know, with the name flipped. Does that make Cosmo Superman? He can fly. The Simpsons-like music from Channel Chasers was written by show composer Guy Moon, but not for Fairly Odd Parents. It's actually a stock track called Bartmania, and also has been used in SpongeBob SquarePants during Help Wanted. So, if you thought it sounded a bit familiar, you didn't know the half of it. March is a big month in the FOP world. It includes March 15th, the worst day of Mr. Crocker's life, March 21st, Timmy's birthday, March 22nd, the day Cosmo had an idea, and of course, March 30th, the anniversary of the show. This year, it turned 16. Season 3 episode, The Big Scoop, is about Chester and AJ growing suspicious of Timmy's newfound popularity. It's actually the flip side of the episode A Wish Too Far from Season 1. Abracatraz, the fairy prison from Wishology, is a play on the real-world prison island Alcatraz. The sign at the gate, a Abandon all hope, ye who here enter, is a reference to the words at the gateway to hell in Dante's Inferno. Basically, it's not a fun place if you're not catching the drift. Jorgen von Strangel's song from School's Out the Musical is called Pull Back the Fairies. In the writing process, however, it was simply known as the Jorgen von Strangel polka, which just proves how important it was that we see Jorgen sing some polka. The episode Snowbound was actually conceived by Butch Hartman's daughter, Sophia. She wanted him to make an episode involving Vicky, Timmy, and Snow, and that episode was the result. What a great dad. You can't talk about Fairly Odd Parents without talking about the head cheese behind it all, Butch Hartman. Hartman has created a handful of shows, but he says that Fairly Odd Parents is special because of its heart. The Timmy, Wanda, Cosmo family dynamic at the center of the show helps ground all the craziness and keeps the show relatable. Timmy Turner almost joined the ranks of Jimmy Neutron and Dexter as a boy genius. Butch Hartman's original plan for the show was for Timmy to solve all his problems with science. However, Dexter was too successful at that time, so he switched it from science to magic. When Butch Hartman was first able to call the shots on his own shows, he had to make a choice to focus on animation or focus on writing. Hartman decided to put the writing first, following the way of The Simpsons. His decision paid off because the popularity of the Fairly Odd Parents later gave way to great animation anyway. Butch Hartman designed the show to feel like a cartoon from the 1950s. It's one of the reasons that Cosmo and Timmy's dads are always wearing ties. No wonder it was an instant classic. If Butch Hartman could go back and do it all over again, he'd change how Timmy got his godparents. Instead of them coming from a magic nine ball, Timmy would have bought them at a pet store. You know, where most fish come from. Butch Hartman once described Timmy as a sarcastic hardhead, but recently that's changed. Timmy's time with Cosmo and Wanda, he says, has not only made him a 
smarter character, but it's allowed the writers to craft more complicated plot lines for him without needing to introduce a ton of side characters to fill space. Butch Hartman loves sneaking parts of his childhood into the show. One you may have missed, his hometown New Baltimore, Michigan. Mr. Crocker went to college at Baltimore University, and Jorgen once says, by the power vested in me and by all of Fairy World and the city of New Baltimore, Michigan. Sly Butch, very sly. If you haven't already, check out Butch Hartman's YouTube page. It's a must watch. He makes videos recreating video game characters, YouTubers, and other Nickelodeon stars using the Fairly Odd Parents style. It's like every weird internet fanfic come to life. Like in a video about knockoff Danny Phantom characters with Nathan and Cladwell of the Draw Free channel, and then Hartman also did a video on the Draw Free channel about knockoff the Fairly Odd Parents. Check it out. Our very own Fred Seibert, hey Fred, has praised Butch Hartman's success and called it unparalleled in the animation industry. He's had three very successful and very good television shows on the air. If Hartman had his way, he'd have 25 shows on the air, but uh, three is still good for now. What's the secret to having a TV show on the air for 10 seasons? According to Butch Hartman, never get lazy. He says that good storytelling and fresh ideas are the key to keeping the lights on. Over time, Fairly Odd Parents has accumulated an impressive lineup of celebrity guest stars. Everyone knows about Jay Leno, Norm MacDonald, and Adam West, but did you know that Timmy's cool older brother, Tommy Turner, was voiced by Jason Bateman? This was back in 2005 too, so those were his peak Arrested Development days. Another often overlooked celeb cameo, Alec Baldwin. He played future Timmy from Channel Chasers. Voice acting is one thing. Singing is a different beast entirely. That's why Red Man and Method Man provide the rapping vocals for the Pixies. There are just some things that Ben Stein can't do. Turbo Thunder is voiced by Brendan Fraser, plucky adventure frontman of the late 90s. Turbo Thunder's role as a chosen one who sleeps through his chosen task is just aggressively Brendan Fraser-like. Poof's first words in a fairly odd movie come from none other than former American Idol judge Randy Jackson. Bet you didn't see that one coming, dog. As mentioned in our last 107, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley of the band Kiss are featured in the episode Wishology. What's their role in the story? Well, they're ancient fairy warriors who are protecting the fire wand, of course. I mean, what else would they be doing? The idea for the Kiss appearance came about when one of the writers recommended that the mythical item that Timmy needs to save the world should be hidden inside a guitar. And who might have that guitar, they wondered. Ah, huh, now it's all coming together. According to Susan Blakesley, one of the most talented voice actors on the show is Butch Hartman himself. Apparently, he can do the voices of every single character on the show, probably because he hears them all in his head. The celebrity guests almost never record their dialogue at the same time as the rest of the voice actors. Tara Strong, the voice of Timmy, theorizes it's because they'd be too intimidated surrounded by so many pros. Not every guest star stuck around, though. Norm MacDonald, Gilbert Gottfried, Frankie Muniz, Adam West, and Julia Louis-Dreyfus all voiced characters and later passed that baton over to someone else in subsequent roles. We know that Butch Hartman is a huge pop culture fan, so every now and then, he brings in some iconic characters to make cameos in Fairly Odd Parents. Here's Fred Flintstone, yabba dabba doing it up in Land Before Timmy. Disney's Wreck-It Ralph was full of video game cameos, but Ralph and Vanellope may have made some cameos themselves. Check out this crowd shot from Dumbbell Curve. Coincidence? Me thinks not. Sometimes, Butch Hartman's own characters make cameos in Fairly Odd Parents as well. Notice any familiar faces in this scene from Man's Worst Friend? Maybe one Keswick. Tough Puppy returns the hospitality by cameoing the Fairly Odd Parents on the TV in Tough Breakup. Or, for all the Danny Phantom fans out there, how about in Flyboy, which pretty much literally features Dash Baxter as the teenager in I Was a Teenage Blowfly. Maybe Dash took up acting. Timmy has also cameoed in the background of a much earlier Butch Hartman cartoon, Terry and Chris, an Oh Yeah cartoon segment. See, there he is in the background. What an average, average kid. Years before the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, Cosmo was already referencing that bulgy fellow Nicktoon. In Sleep Over and Over, Cosmo finds an ant, bee, and cat, and names them Carl. Cindy, and Jimmy, respectively. All these characters are from Jimmy Neutron. In our last 107 video, we mentioned SpongeBob's human cameo on the show, but that wasn't the only time FOP threw a little love his way. In Something's Fishy, the King of Atlantis mentions that its denizens eat crab, starfish, and the occasional underwater squirrel. These are clearly references to Mr. Krabs, Patrick, and Sandy. Maybe love was the wrong word. Let's talk full-on crossovers, though. Core cast members of the show have poofed up in everything from MTV's TRL to Big Time Rush to Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. These fairies really get around. Just this year, Fairly Odd Parents had its first major crossover since the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour in Beast of Friends. The episode saw Timmy, Wanda, and Cosmo teaming up with Mikey and Bunsen from Bunsen is a Beast. Apparently, Cosmo and Bunsen are old friends, which is oddly unsurprising. Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, and Tough Puppy had a crossover. Okay, so it was like three minutes and was mainly just to welcome Bunsen is a Beast into the Hartman cartoon family, but still, we take a victory where we can get it. When you have a 
show as long running as Fairly Odd Parents, you're bound to lose track of some of the continuity, and sometimes the creators do too. Here are some of the Easter eggs for the eagle eyed observer. Like, remember when Timmy wished for heat vision and melted his dad's prized marathon trophy? Well, it turns out that Timmy has just low key had heat vision since that episode, as he whipped it out again in Escape from Unwish Island. What other wishes has he made that haven't gone away? In the episode Double O Schnozmo, we learn that Cosmo actually has a big nosed older brother named Schnozmo. However, in the grand plan, Cosmo had to turn to Anti Cosmo for a replacement for Giggly Gland, since he was an only child. Oh well, Schnozmo probably wouldn't have helped anyway. In the show's pilot episode, Vicky mentions having a little brother, who she blackmails with adult magazines when he doesn't listen to her. However, we've never seen or heard about her brother since then. Instead, Vicky now has a little sister, Tootie, who I guess she still could be blackmailing. It's not just the people on FOP who don't age. The technology doesn't either. As of season 10, the show still uses old-fashioned sound effects and depicts early 2000s era technology, like boxy computers and cathode ray TVs. They even did an emo episode in 2014. What, did Timmy wish for it to be 2002 forever? In the very first episode, The Big Problem, it looks like Timmy has a pet parrot who molts all his feathers after hearing Vicky say her name, and then never appears again. In That's Life, Timmy mentions having a pet parrot who ran away while he was at summer camp. Guess we all know where it went. Owning a fairy godparent is all about balance. If a fairy can't grant wishes for their kid, then they get magical buildup. But if the kid wishes for too many things, the kid gets sent away to the wishing well. You've got to make just the right amount. See also Goldilocks and the Three Fairies. Poof may not be long for this world. It sounds dark, but hear me out. In Timmy's secret wish, Poof is sent away to Hocus Poconos after all of Timmy's wishes got unwished, because Timmy wished for him. In Channel Chasers, we're shown that Timmy will keep his fairies until he turns 18, at which point all traces of his fairy godparents will disappear, including his wishes. So won't Poof vanish then too? Good thing no one ever ages on this show. Crocker's fantasies become a reality in Abracatastrophe, literally. Back in Transparence, Crocker imagines himself as supreme ruler of the world, with crazy decked out armor turning his colleagues to ash. That's exactly what happens in the movie, except he messes up and turns the students into ice instead of ash. Details, details. Hocus Poconos is filled with callbacks to earlier episodes. You may recognize the likes of Superbike, Hank the Rhino, and the Magic TV remote from Channel Chasers. Now that's what I call fan service. Ever wonder if Cosmo and Wanda magically coming into Timmy's life was too good to be true? Well, some fans have theorized that the fairies are just perceived manifestations of the antidepressants taken by Timmy. What's that? Those fans were us at Channel Frederator? Oh yeah! Fairly Odd Parents has grown even bigger than the show itself. Those big-eyed, spiky hair rascals made their way all over pop culture. For starters, hip-hop artist designer named a single after Timmy Turner. Yeah, don't play it for your kids though. It's definitely not kids bop. The Fairly Odd Parents has had four video games based on it. Enter the Clef, Break into Rules, Shadow Showdown, and Clash with the Anti-World. The last one came out in 2006, and to put that in perspective for you, it was for the Game Boy Advance. My, how we've advanced. Timmy has also teamed up with his fellow Nicktoons for four Nicktoon titles, including Freeze Frame Frenzy, Nicktoons Unite, Battle for Volcano Island, and Attack on the Toy Bots. Don't mind me, I'm just sitting here waiting for a fourth Nicktoons Unite game. Carry on. In 2004, a fairly odd coaster opened up at the Nicktoon Universe Amusement Park inside the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota. Step aside, Escalator Land. Or I guess don't step, because it's automated. From 2002 to 2009, Fairly Odd Parents comics were published in Nickelodeon magazine. There was even a couple Jimmy Timmy crossover comics in there, including one with a bunch of other Nicktoons in it. Man, I miss the good old print magazine days. The show was parodied in an episode of Mad, with a segment called Fairly Odd Parental Controls. In the segment, Cosmo and Wanda appear to help kids bypass a parental block using a magic remote that disguises what they're watching. Hmm, last time they whipped up a magical remote, things did not turn out so hot. Oh, and in that Mad parody, Wanda is voiced by none other than Tara Strong, who voiced Timmy on the actual Fairly Odd Parents show. So she's had a lot of time to practice. Mad also parodied Fairly Odd Parents in Mad Magazine, in which they pointed out why hasn't Timmy used his fairies to wish away his buck teeth? That observation aside, the parody has also been seen by Butch Hartman, who said that being made fun of by Mad Magazine is how you know your show has really made it. Fairly Odd Parents and Chalk Zone not only share an origin from Oh Yeah cartoons and a composer in Guy Moon, but also some songs. The Get Ready For This knockoff heard in Fairly Odd Parents episode Totally Spaced Out was used in a Chalk Zone episode Lost in Chalk Zone, and a musical cue from the original Fairly Odd Parents episode later popped up in Chalk Zone's Future Zone. The show has been nominated for 48 awards and received 16 wins, including an Emmy for Outstanding Individual Achievement in Animation and Annie's for Music in a TV Production, Best Character Design, and Outstanding Storyboarding. Now, just make sure that Timmy doesn't melt any of them. Get ready, because now it's time to serve up some cold, hard numbers. Dimsdale was founded 
founded in 1744 and has a population of 625,348, which would make it the 28th most populated city in America just before Las Vegas. Fairy World, on the other hand, is home to about 81,004 fairies. While that may sound like a whole lot, the population of kids on the planet is somewhere around the 2 billion range. No wonder there's a fairy shortage. There are about 57 known rules in the rulebook, and certainly more to come, if Timmy keeps making crazy movie-worthy wishes. The Fairly Odd Parents is now tied with SpongeBob SquarePants for most seasons of a Nicktoon, each with a whopping 10 seasons. Although, there are 215 episodes of SpongeBob and only 161 episodes of The Fairly Odd Parents, so the sponge is still on top for now. Cosmo and Wanda have been married for 9,895 years. Considering that 41% of marriages end after just 8 years, it looks like Cosmo and Wanda are in it for the long haul. Aww. According to Timmy's permanent record, he actually has 50% less brain matter than your typical student. So really, Timmy is a below average kid that no one understands. Cosmo has said that Timmy weighs 50 pounds without his buck teeth, and Timmy's normal weight is 60 pounds. That means he's got 10 pounds of sheer tooth in his head. No wonder he's miserable all the time. Cosmo and Wanda's address is 123 Fishbowl Lane. Timmy's room, USA. I'm not just being cute. That's really it. Please forward all fan mail to that address. Once again, I'm Joe, and thanks for watching 107 more facts about Fairly Odd Parents. Everyone's fantasized about having the power to make their wishes come true. I mean, that's just part of being human. There are always aspects of our lives that could be improved through some creative magic use, but not everyone has fairy godparents. To make you even more bummed about being magicless, here are the 14 best fairly odd parents' wishes. Thanks, Studio Bombshell. Having your wildest wishes come true sure would make life a whole lot more interesting. And no, I'm not talking about Dragon Balls, Monkey Paws, or even some lame genie, but a pair of Fairy Godparents to enhance your day-to-day -day adventures. One lucky kid got the chance, and today on Channel Frederator, I, Kyle G, am going to count down the top 14 best wishes Timmy Turner made in the show Fairly Odd Parents. Number 14, a shrinky suit. Everything just seems more interesting when you're tiny. And without Rick Moranis around to provide a shrink ray, wishing for a handy dandy shrinking suit will do. Exploring inside the human body looks like a blast, and from what films like Osmosis Jones have told me, you are bound to run into some kooky characters along the way. Though watch out, those antibodies seem vicious. Number 13, Expert Magician. Street magic always seemed like a neat thing to be able to do, but screw going around doing some lame tricks. Illusion, Michael. I would use my fairy godparents to make larger than life entertainment that would blow David Blaine away. Maybe I would even be like Timmy and do a little crime fighting along the way, but I'll save that for a wish later. Number 12, Talking Car. There have been some awesome talking cars over the years. Kit, speed buggy, car, wouldn't it be great to have a constant driving companion? Whether it be an artificial intelligence, or like in Timmy's case, a transformed character, those long road trips would be a little bit more fun, especially if it has a few crazy contraptions and enhancements. Number 11, a house of cats. Cats, as the entire internet can tell you, are the best. Why wouldn't I want a house full of them? I mean, other than the litter, my allergies, or all the fur on everything. Whatever, I think the positives outweigh the negatives. Number 10, dessert for every meal. A dentist's worst nightmare and my sweet tooth's greatest dream, dessert for every meal. Cake, ice cream, chocolate bars, cupcakes, brownies, the whole shebang. Glorious sugar rushes might end in vicious crashes, and constant sugary goodness may add a few pounds, but who cares? Have another piece of cake. Number 9. Jump into a comic. The overwhelming comic nerd in me wouldn't let this wishes thing go on too long before I would have to hop into my favorite superhero titles and fight at their side. The Crimson Chin is cool and all, but personally, I would join my favorite web slinger in some high-speed, swinging Spider-Man action. Then again, the Marvel comics may have enough spider-themed characters as it is. Number 8. Party Anytime Make any night a party night with some instant giant speakers and snacks. Being able to wish a party out of nowhere could turn a mellow night into an extravaganza. But be ready for some noise complaints because your neighbors won't be too happy. I'll tell you what's terrible! Living next to you! Number 7. Time Travel There have been plenty of points in history I would love to go, and a magic-powered time scooter would do the trick. Timmy used it mostly to cover up a mess he got into, but I would totally go back and check out what the dinosaurs were really like. Maybe I would see what tweaking the timeline would do a little, but always make sure things were back in place when I was done. Hopefully. Number 6. A Redo Watch the undo function has been a lifesaver for me in programs like Photoshop, Word, Flash, PowerPoint, Premiere. Oh, okay, yeah, let me just fix that real quick.
Alright. So the ability to do it in real life sounds fantastic. And that is where the redo watch comes in. Have the upper hand on a bully. Retake that test you did poorly on. Just don't let it fall in the wrong hands. Number five, enter the internet. The internet is full of cool and interesting things and traveling it like a virtual reality paradise would be incredible. Yeah, there might be corners of the web you may want to avoid, but there are so many great forms of entertainment and the aforementioned cats that you could spend a lifetime exploring. I wonder how those old sites from the 90s would be like with all the amazingly hideous clip art. Number four, instant jobs. Seriously, finding a job sucks sometimes. Well, all the time. But with the website Timmy makes for his dad, you can find an awesome job instantly. Maybe the high risk factor of some of them should be a concern, but hey, gotta pay the bills somehow. Might as well make it a little more exciting. Number three, become a video game character. Since watching Tron, going into a video game has been one of the biggest wishes of mine and many others. To be able to leap into a fun, creative world where you get unreal powers and abilities would be a blast. Better stock up on those extra lives, though. Who knows what would happen if you bite that pixel dust. Game over, man. Game over. Number two, mind reading. What might be the most useful trivia night wish of all? The ability to read minds would turn any quiz into child's play. Like the internet wish, you might want to avoid reading certain people's deeper thoughts, but that doesn't mean it won't have plenty of use to hear what others might be thinking, or just how simple some people really are. Yeah! Number 1. Become a Cartoon Like games and comics, this would be an incredible experience just to explore the imaginative creations others have made over generations. What makes cartoons better than video games and comics and internet and all that? Well, we are Channel Frederator and we love cartoons. Timmy turns his world into a 1930s cartoon. Imagine being able to jump right into Steamboat Willie and experience animation history. A place where the problems are trivial and everyone and everything just seems to bounce happily all day long. Going that far back, I might miss color after a bit. Maybe I can go a little further forward and check out what the Super Friends are up to. With great power comes great responsibility. Or with great power comes great responsibility. Something like that. I don't think Spider-Man technically exists in the Fairly Odd Parents universe. Maybe like an off-brand version called like Arachnid Dude. And still, Timmy hasn't always been responsible with his wishes, and this often results in some wild situations. Sometimes these situations are, well, maybe a little criminal in nature. Get ready, it's time for nine Fairly Odd Parents episodes that would get Timmy Turner locked up. Is Timmy Turner just an average kid with fairy godparents, or should he be Dimsdale's most wanted? Hey everyone, this is Akeem with Channel Frederator, and I'm here to tell you about nine times Timmy Turner should have been locked up. Let's serve up some justice. Public Indecency for decades now, Turner has tried to bypass the rules, the guidelines that fairies must follow. His magical shenanigans may seem fun at first glance, but you know what isn't fun? Doing time. Even though the rules expressly forbid numerous human crimes, lawless wishmaker Timmy Turner has committed a spectrum of felonies. In 2003, the unsuspecting citizens of Dimsdale awoke to the headline, Naked Terror Stun City. The perpetrator exposed himself to cameras across the city and ran naked through Dimsdale's own Museum of Natural History. The town hero, Chompy the Goat, was left scarred by the whole ordeal. So what sick pervert would do such a thing? None other than Timothy Tiberius Turner. Before wishing himself to the comic store to flee bath time, not illegal, but gross. Come on, dude, seriously, hygiene is important. Timmy neglected to get dressed. His wish dropped him buck naked into the middle of town with just one long exposed path home. In California, where Dimsdale is located, public indecency is a crime. Trust me, I know. Probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, just one violation can lead to six months of county jail time or a thousand dollar fine. Two times, and you're looking at a full felony charge. As such, when Timmy wound up in the buff yet again in the episode Emotion Commotion, it's really no laughing matter. He's a serial streaker. Now, whether Timmy intended to expose himself in those situations is up for debate. We'll let his lawyer sort it out in court. Here's hoping he hires Fairy Mason, the hard-boiled lawyer from Genie Meanie Miney Moe. 
public indecency has to be intentional to be considered a crime. But after you see the other offenses on this list, you'll see that flashing his wand in public is the least of Timmy's wrongdoings. Truancy and criminal mischief. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Ironically, Catman hadn't lived long enough to become the villain until he was turned back into a kid. In Go Young Westman, former star child Adam West realizes that his entire youth was wasted on the sets of TV sitcoms. He never got to be a regular kid. With the best of intentions, Timmy Turner asked Cosmo and Wanda to give West one last day of childhood. The fairies grant the wish, and Catman becomes Cat Kid once more. To celebrate the carefree joys of childhood, Cat Kid and Timmy spent the wholesome afternoon playing in a ball pit and eating soy cubes, right? Wrong! In reality, they kick off a crime spree with truancy, also known as playing hooky. Truancy isn't actually a jailable crime, so at worst, it would result in a large fine for Timmy's parents. Sorry, truancy officer Shallowgrave, but they're off the hook for that one. What could get the felonist feline and his pink-hatted partner locked up, though, are charges of criminal mischief. Timmy and Cat Kid TP Mr. Crocker's house, which is not only defacing his property, but could also be considered trespassing. Definite misdemeanors. When Shallow Grave catches them in the act, Turner tries to wish for a train to hit him. That's right, attempted vehicular manslaughter. It's against the rules, so Cosmo and Wanda couldn't grant it. But hopefully you're seeing that the law alone can't stop Turner's reign of terror. This kid's evil, seriously. Mutilation of national bank obligations. Wow. A lot of big words in this one, huh? Really, it's just legalese for intentionally destroying U.S. currency. It covers cutting it up, defacing it, pretty much any action that makes it unusable. To keep the superhero analogies going, some men just want to watch the world burn. In Mr. Right, Timmy wishes to always be right, and instead of the wish making Timmy smart, it just liquefies the laws of physics in accordance to Timmy's stupid wrong thoughts. Not illegal. When Turner gets home and Vicky asks him to guess what's burning, his comic book collection, he rebuts that it's actually her life savings. The burning stack of books magically poofs into a burning stack of legal tender. This type of crime typically goes unpunished since, well, how will anyone know that you ripped a dollar in half? But considering the quantity of cash in this situation, Vicky may just have a case. On top of the mutilation charges, there may also be grounds here for a grand larceny charge. I mean, after all, Timmy took all of Vicky's money without her consent. In the end, though, it's not about the money, it's it's about sending a message. Copyright infringement. 3D printing is one of the most buzzed about innovations of the last decade. The technology has a ton of legitimate legal uses, but one popular illegal use is printing and sharing designs based on intellectual properties. Copyright laws don't yet have a concrete definition of what constitutes a breach of copyright in these cases, but so far, it hasn't stopped companies from taking action against the folks using their intellectual properties. Timmy was way ahead of the curve on this one. He's been fraudulently reproducing merchandise since 2003 using his magical copy machine. In the episode Hard Copy, Wanda gives him the printer so that he can satisfy his selfish thirst for wishes while she and Cosmo are at the doctor's office. Timmy breaks out a toy catalog and scans all the items inside, reproducing popular toys like Flipsy, trademarked, and Dark Laser, also trademark, from Space Wars. But that's, that's a copyright. If Space Wars copyright holder, let's say it's the Walt Kidney Company, want it, then they could send Timmy a cease and desist notice. If Timmy was found guilty of copyright infringement, the punishment could be several hundred thousand dollars in fines and jail time. Plus, if people get in trouble for printing bulgy likenesses of popular franchises, can you imagine the legal ramifications of printing a life-size animated dark laser? Unauthorized access. Computer hacking and cyber terrorism are hot button 
hot-button topics at the moment, and Timmy Turner is not untouched by the zetgeist. After his parents sent an embarrassing email to his crush, Timmy shrinks down and goes inside the internet to take back the threatmantic email. Definitely close enough to cybercrime by Hollywood standards. And remember those funny gags where Timmy spies on AJ or that Australian girl? <laughs> yeah, they're creepy at best and unwarranted surveillance at worst. Not to mention that in AJ's case, the information that Timmy eavesdrops on is a direct correspondence between AJ and the President of the United States. Now that's pretty dang treasonous. The most applicable crime across the motherboard here, though, is unauthorized access. Essentially, a digital invasion of privacy. Each computer that Timmy zaps into is an invasion of his friend's privacy, and the information he accesses is taken without authorization. Crimes of this magnitude, especially when the President is involved, could have Timmy looking at a decade in federal prison. Good luck hacking yourself out of that one, Turner. Accessory to kidnapping. Kidnapping is a serious and despicable offense, but frankly, I'm just happy that this entry isn't about the murder of Chip Skylark and his shiny teeth. If Timmy had his druthers, his ruthless lethal druthers, then the shiny tooth pop star would have been killed in a crime of passion. Turner was consumed with jealousy when Skylark stole all the attention at his birthday. By the way, the theft of someone's heart with catchy pop jams is not illegal. In a desperate fit of rage, Timmy wished that something bad would happen to Chip. A bad thing could be anything from a horrific car crash to a cracked tooth, though the bigger crime would be messing up Skylark's perfect, beautiful face. It's telling that the wish was shot down by Cosmo and Wanda, since it could cause Chip bodily harm. Instead, the worst non-lethal something that Timmy could do to Chip was to wish for his car to break down outside of Timmy's house. Now this leads to Vicky kidnapping him. Here. Vicky is the criminal, not Timmy, but he is completely complicit in her crime and thus at least an accessory. He even confronts the hostage aware that he is being held against his will, yet failing to report it. Ultimately, Timmy decides to show mercy and let Chip go, but we can only wonder what horrors would have befallen him if not for the rules. Negligent property damage. Now, to be fair to Timmy, not all of his crimes are deliberate, premeditated misdeeds of an evil mastermind. No, sometimes he's just downright negligent. Negligence is a great legal term that means that an individual has what's called the duty of care to prevent a situation, but fails to do so. In other words, Timmy's greatest talent. In Timmy's 2D House of Horror, the boy Blunder wishes that the special effects in a movie, The Haunted Volcano, were more real. This causes an actual spurt of lava to blast out of the film and destroy Vicky's house. I don't know if you can go so far as to call this arson, but it's definitely property damage, and Timmy is liable. In a good 99% of the time, destruction by a volcano cannot be chalked up to any one person's negligence. That's not an actual legal fact, it's just, you know, what volcanoes are like. In this case, though, it's completely the result of negligence on Timmy's part. He created the volcano and had the means to prevent the damage, but chose to do nothing about it in hopes that Vicky would be forced to move away. Timmy breached his duty of care, and so, somehow, he is more at fault than the freaking volcano! Assault and battery and coercion. We're officially crossing over into the dark side now. Timmy's last shred of innocence has disappeared. The road to the dark side is paved with assault, battery, and coercion. When Timmy joins forces with Dark Laser, trademarked in the end of the university, he's given a suit that allows him to break the rules completely. Thankfully, he doesn't act on any homicidal tendencies. He does use his newfound abilities to cheat in the science fair, but that's not really a felony. It's just a crappy thing to do. Come on, Timmy, seriously. Assault and battery, on the other hand, is a felony. When Timmy and his fairies slam Francis and Mr. Crocker into the lockers repeatedly, they are purposefully using force in an effort to cause injury. Even if they don't sustain lasting damage, Timmy's victims could assert that his intent to harm them was very obvious. As for coercion, that's generally defined as forcing another person to act against their free will. For example, Timmy brainwashing Trixie into kissing him. While there's no legal precedent, for magical brainwashing, it's wicked creepy and palpably illegal nonetheless. Never underestimate the power of the dark side. Domestic terrorism. Now let me just cut right to the chase.
face here. Nega Timmy is a terrorist. He first appears when normal Posse Timmy makes a wish to do the opposite of everything his parents tell him to do. They tell him to be good, so as per the rules, he rebounds into a straight up evil super villain. His first crime, remodeling his living room into a secret lair. Now that's gotta require some kind of building permit and safety regulations from the town of Dimsdale. And we're pretty sure Negatimi did not go through the necessary bureaucratic measures. He then creates a super deadly evil super evil laser. That's the actual name. Which is clearly a weapon of mass destruction. His intention is to shoot down a satellite, causing it to crash into Mount Dimsdale. The resulting volcanic eruption is meant to destroy the Dimsdale dam, leading to a flood of the makeup factory, which will result in the total collapse of society. Can we just take a second to break down how unabashedly illegal this is? Seriously. That's an egregious amount of private and public property damage, much of it government owned. Satellites and dams cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Destruction of either could be tried on a federal level. The volcano too may be considered public land, so tack a hefty fine on for that damage. Also, dude, again with the volcanoes? What's going on, seriously? Someone's got an MO or preference. Then there's the whole plunging society into chaos aspect of the plan, which is textbook terrorism. Though Timmy is able to reverse the wish and undo the damage, it's flat out irresponsible not to take him into custody immediately afterward. To think, at one point, all we had to worry about was streaking. Once again, I'm Akeem, and thanks for watching Timmy Turner Locked Up. I'll wrap things up with two theories that'll get your magical mind working overtime. Let me know what you think about these down in the comments. I've been jealous of Timmy Turner's life for like 15 years. Seriously, who wouldn't want magical friends that granted your every wish? Cosmo and Wanda were the perfect godparents. They were Timmy's best friends and they always gave him like the coolest stuff in the entire world. But have you ever stopped to realize that without his godparents, Timmy Turner's life would be pretty miserable? If you haven't, don't worry. Cartoon Conspiracy is here again to ruin your childhood for you. So what if fairy godparents and all of fairy world didn't actually exist? And what if Cosmo and Wanda were really just manifestations of the antidepressants Timmy Turner was taking? This theory, originally contrived on Reddit, states that Cosmo and Wanda never existed. Timmy Turner is just a 10 year old kid suffering from depression and anxiety. And his fairy godparents are really just personifications of his antidepressants. Cosmo being Zoloft and Wanda being Prozac. The theory begins with the pilot episode of The Fairly Odd Parents that aired as a part of Oh Yeah Cartoons way, way back in 1998. In this episode, Timmy meets his horrendous babysitter, Vicky, for the first time. And with the misery that Vicky inflicts upon Timmy comes his fairy godparents. As a part of the gajillion rules in Del Rulebook, Timmy's godparents will only be around as long as he needed them, usually when he is feeling sad, upset, or scared. Let's be honest here, Timmy's life is not the greatest. His parents are oblivious and borderline negligent. They constantly leave him alone with the worst babysitter to ever walk the face of the earth. And even his crazy teacher, Mr. Crocker, is constantly out to get him. He's just a kid and it's believable that he would need some sort of relief from all of this. Just maybe instead of magic, it's prescription drugs. Much like clinical depression and anxiety, which can affect you your entire life, Cosmo and Wanda seem to stay in Timmy's life way past his childhood. Technically, you lose your fairy godparents when you become a grown-up, but Timmy has found a way to bend those rules. You can see this in the live-action adaptations of the Fairly Odd Parents starring Drake Bell. And in the rulebook, there is actually a Timmy Turner loophole, essentially stating that if you are Timmy Turner and you are over the age of 13 years old, and as long as you don't make any selfish wishes, you can keep your fairy godparents. You can also see this in use in the season five TV special, Timmy's Secret Wish. Using a handheld aging device, Timmy sees that Cosmo and Wanda will be with him well into his 20s, which could be a metaphor for how Timmy continues to struggle with his depression. Other theories speculate that practically all of the fairies Timmy interacts with in the show are metaphors for drugs as well. For example, the overly buff Jordan Von Strangle is a metaphor for steroids. And Wandissimo, Wanda's macho ex-boyfriend, is Viagra. So if the fairies are all metaphors for drugs, 
what could Mr. Crocker be? You know, Timmy's psycho teacher who is bent on outing Cosmo, Wanda, and all of Fairy World. Is he really Timmy's teacher? Or is it possible that he's actually Timmy's therapist attempting to convince Timmy to drop the drugs? So could Cosmo and Wanda really be Zoloft and Prozac? And could all of Fairy World be a metaphor for drug use? For those of you not currently crying on the floor in the fetal position, reevaluating your favorite childhood TV shows, we're gonna keep moving on. Coming off of these kinds of drugs can be difficult, and I can see why Vicky would give Timmy lasting traumatization. In the season six episode, Wishing Well, Timmy is actually sent to wish rehab for overwishing Cosmo and Wanda, which could really be a very clear metaphor for drug overdose. Now, there are many, many different rules about how to lose your fairy godparents. But one in particular actually supports this theory. If a godchild says, I am happy and I don't need my fairy godparents anymore, they disappear, much like antidepressants. If someone decides they're better off without their drugs, they no longer have to take them. As much as it pains me to say it, this theory could actually make sense. Now, I'm not saying creator Butch Hartman created the show as a commentary on prescription drugs, but the more you look into Fairy World, more connections can be drawn about all kinds of drug use. Aside from Wandissimo being Viagra, cause that doesn't make any sense for a 10 year old boy. Some speculate that Mark Chang, Timmy's Yugopotamian friend, could be marijuana because of his spaced out personality and the green smoke that surrounds his ship. The anti-fairies could be harmful drugs like heroin, and the pixies could be placebos due to their inability to perform magic. Seeing as this is my very last episode as your host for Cartoon Conspiracy, I've decided to cover one of my very favorite animated shows. And what show could that be? Only one that involves pop stars with perfect teeth, evil babysitters, magic, and a whole lot of pink and green. Fairly Odd Parents actually got its start in 1998 with Frederator's own Oh Yeah cartoons. And since 2001, it has brought a little bit more magic into our lives with our friend Timmy and his fairy godparents, Cosmo and Wanda. They are always there for him to help him solve his problems and cheer him up, but mostly the three of them just cause total mayhem together. Cosmo and Wanda have been married for thousands of years, and Wanda is definitely the brains of the operation. But it hasn't always been that way. Is it just me, or doesn't it seem like Cosmo has gotten dumber over the years? Could he be secretly hiding his smarts? Or is it possible that all of that magic is killing brain cells? Cosmo and Wanda are the best magical friends a kid could ask for. Together, they can give Timmy anything he wants as long as they work together. But doesn't it seem like Wanda is always the smart one? In practically every episode, Wanda is the voice of reason, having to save Timmy and Cosmo from all sorts of danger. But Wanda is often the one blamed for all of the trouble that Cosmo and Timmy cause. Because according to Jorgen von Strangle, she takes full responsibility for all of their actions because of Cosmo's dangerous stupidity. Now that doesn't seem fair. I'm no expert here. But isn't the key to every successful relationship sharing responsibility for things? Especially when it comes to destroying all of Fairy World on several occasions. If you're a Fairly Odd Parents fanatic like me, you might have noticed that Cosmo has taken quite the dive in IQ points since 1998. It definitely seems like in the original Fairly Odd Parents pilot that aired with Oya oh yeah cartoons, Cosmo actually had more smarts than Wanda. And even in the earlier episodes of the show, Cosmo and Wanda both refer to themselves as two halves of a whole idiot. Now that is the kind of blame sharing we are looking for in a healthy relationship. It seems like Cosmo's brain has been slowly deteriorating over the past 15 years. Because in the season six episode, Fairly Odd Baby, it's revealed that Cosmo's head is completely empty and is actually just full of jelly. What kind of jelly? Grape jelly. She knows me so well. So how could this have happened? Is there some kind of awful side effect to magic that deteriorates brain cells? If so, why doesn't it affect Wanda? Is it possible that Cosmo is just plain dumb in order to avoid the fault of his reckless actions and the wrath of Jorgen von Strangle? I have way too many questions and I have no idea what the answer could be, but I've got one idea where to find them though. And in a cartoon conspiracy first, we are going to go right to the source to find the answers to our questions.
So over the past two years on Cartoon Conspiracy, we have wildly speculated about what some of these answers are for these crazy cartoon theories, but never have we actually gone to the source. So here I have today, creator of Fairly Odd Parents, Butch Hartman. Hey Emily, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, great, thanks for having me. Oh, well thank you for being here because <laughs> we have some pretty in-depth questions wow, about your character Cosmo. You know, the show started off with Cosmo being smarter. I mean, you probably remember in the Oh Yeah cartoons, Cosmo seemed to be about the same level with Wanda, but mm -hmm. he's been getting increasingly more stupid. Mm -hmm. I think we started off, I wanted Cosmo to be sort of a used car salesman. He was like <laughs> Mr. Slick Guy. I was, he was sort of like this, I'm a fairy. And um, <laughs> But as the show went on, we realized that we really wanted the fairies to be a lot sillier so they would mess up Tim's wishes. Our lead voice actor, Darren Norris, kept coming in with this silly voice. He kept making his voice higher and higher and higher and he started, and as the voice got higher and higher, he just started sounding a lot stupider. So we uh, we were able to write a lot more for that. It really came out of a combo of us wanting the character to be sillier and Darren Norris doing a, a dumber voice. Now the one who's actually really smart is Anti-Cosmo. Anti-Cosmo, you know he's smart because he's English and so he already is smart. Anyone with an English accent is obviously way smarter than It's we true. Are. It's totally true. Way smarter. Yeah. Is there anything in magic that would possibly lower your brain cells? Like anything like lower your IQ? Like, is there like some reckless side effect to magic that? Yeah, I think fairies, it's funny. When you look at the fairies, they're all head. Yeah. So you think they'd yeah. be all brain. Exactly. But they're, but they're really not. They're, their heads are what make them float. Oh, so okay. their, their heads uh, are just okay. full, of, full of air, basically. Yeah. Yeah, full of Physics. Helium, helium, I think, makes them float. Yeah. Yeah. What was your inspiration behind Cosmo and Wanda, the characters and their relationship? When I first came up with the show, I wanted it to be just about Timmy and having a magic friend. And I just created Wanda first. I thought I was a little boy with a fairy godmother, sort of like a boy version of Cinderella. And that's kind of where it started. And then I thought, you know, it'd be a lot more fun because I knew he had parents. The whole idea was he had parents. They loved him, but didn't make, pay much attention to him. So I wanted him to have another set of parents. And so I thought I should give Wanda a husband. I'd never seen a fairy godfather before. And that's kind of where Cosmo came from. The initial thing was they just love Timmy. They want to be his best pals with anything he tells them to do. It's just they're not that bright and they get things wrong. That's sort of like their kryptonite because if you have a character that's too powerful, it's really hard to write stories for them because they can sort of do anything they're not limited. So having the limitation of their intelligence really <laughs> made the stories a lot better. So since this is the first time we do have the creator here, I felt like I should take this opportunity to ask, which on the possibility meter, what would you give the Is Cosmo Secretly Smart conspiracy? Well, let's see, on a scale of one to five, since I think it's pretty obvious Cosmo's actually pretty dumb. I'd say I'd give this in the plausibility meter probably about one and three quarter crowns on the plausibility meter. I'm not so sure what you guys in the comments will think. So if you agree or disagree with how Bush Hartman rated his own show, please put it in the comments. <laughs> yes. Oh, I have one more thing I want to talk about. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I have, I have a go brand new it. app on the App Store. It's called the Noob Network. You can go on the iPhone Store and download this. It's absolutely free. It's got all kinds of cool original cartoons and shows and uh, music and games and just check it out. And I know you all have a phone because most of you are probably watching this on your phone. Exactly. And the teacher just took it away. Sorry, you knew the rules. Well, now that we're back and we have the answers to our questions, it's time for me to say thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on Cartoon Conspiracy these past two years. This is not goodbye forever from me because I will definitely be back from time to time to help host some episodes. And this definitely isn't the end of Cartoon Conspiracy. And with that being said, we are looking for a new host. If you guys are interested, make a YouTube video, post it, and email it to us and tell us why you would make an excellent host for Cartoon Conspiracy. We are ideally looking for someone in the New York City or LA area, and this is a paid opportunity. Be sure to stay tuned for the next couple episodes of Conspiracy. We're going to have many special guests until we can find the right host for you guys. And as for me, thank you for watching. And there you have it. All the Fairly Odd Parents videos you could possibly wish for. That is what you wished for, right? Well, even if it wasn't, at least we had fun. What did you think of this compilation? Did you learn anything new? Which wish from Fairly Odd Parents is your favorite of all time? Make sure you let us know down in the comments and subscribe to Channel Frederator for more like this. And remember, Frederator loves you.